So you may have learned about genes in your classes and about DNA. And DNA is very important. It's the library of information for how your body should work. But DNA actually doesn't do most of the work in your body. What does the work in your body are proteins. And proteins can do things uh, as uh, far ranging as contracting the muscles in your arm uh, or actually taking the oxygen from your lungs to those muscles in your arm in order for them to be able to work. And the proteins have complex shapes that allow them to do these functions. And the way those shapes get formed are from interactions in the building blocks of those proteins called amino acids. So you might have heard about amino acids, and you probably think of protein. And when you think of protein first, you think of something like a piece of steak, right? So meat has protein in it. Well, meat comes from the muscles of a cow. And when you eat that meat, your stomach, or the, uh, the acids in your stomach, break that down into the individual amino acids that make up those proteins. And your body can take them and rebuild them in different forms so that they can fold up and do the functions that your body needs them to, to do. And so the way that those amino acids can fold up is by interacting in different ways. So you can have amino acids with positive charges or with negative charges. And you may have heard that opposites attract, and that's true of these opposite charges. So the positives like the negatives. And so if you have a chain of amino acids that's linked like this, the positives will like the negatives, and they'll tend to fold up like that and start to fold the protein. There are other types of amino acids also that are called hydrophobic amino acids. And these amino acids don't want to interact with either the positive or the negative amino acids, but they do like interacting with each other, like Velcro. And that's how we make these blocks, is with Velcro on them. And so when this protein starts to fold, positives will like negatives, hydrophobics will like hydrophobics, and so they'll fold up like that. And of course, opposites attract, but likes repel each other, and so positives don't like positives. And so this combination of interactions of positives attracting negatives, repelling other positives, and of the hydrophobics trying to hang out with themselves allows proteins to fold up into complex shapes. And these complex shapes each have a function. And those, as I said, those functions can be as wide-ranging as contracting your muscles or transporting oxygen to those muscles. And all of this is made possible by assembling these building blocks, these amino acids, in different sequences so they can fold up and the protein shapes can do their job. So I'm James Peterson at the University of Pennsylvania, and that's my short explanation of protein folding.